Like ancient town squares or sites of worship, modern shopping malls are meeting places that Australia's metropolitan suburbs have been built around. Most have or once had anything from a small strip mall to a standalone complex. As of 2018, there are about 1,500 of them nationwide, but malls around the world are shutting as people increasingly shop online, and the ones that are staying afloat are morphing into something completely different. I don't even know which way to go. There's so much construction as well. Also, it's fucking school holidays, which I didn't realise. Chadston, Australia's biggest shopping centre and one of the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere, now walks the line between community hub and theme park. Remember where we parked? It has 10,000 car parking spaces, with more being built today, and more than 500 shops spread over 230,000 square metres of retail space just off the Monash Freeway in Melbourne's southeast. But despite attracting 23 million visitors a year, according to its website, many Melburnians will tell you it's a hellhole, and I truly don't know anyone who has continued to visit regularly beyond teenagehood, except one. My friend Mark, who has never stopped coming here since he was a child growing up in the area. Hey, I'm Mark June. I'm a former food critic. I'm an artist. And I'm also a Chadstonologist. Chadston opened in 1960 and has undergone a lot of development and reimagining in recent years to become Australia's quote-unquote fashion capital, where all the luxury brands have installed an outpost. It may have had humble beginnings, but there's nothing humble about Chadston now. This is a place to spend big and everything about it directs you to shop more and more. Mark has watched this mega mall expand over the years and he's noticed a few odd things about the new building design. You gotta come close, come close, look at that. That's a result, that's a non-trivial result. Wow. Oh, okay, hello. Hello, watch it roll. Hello, empirical test number two. Look at that, Did not, it was not pushed, it was not pushed. Okay, but what happens if you wanna walk this way? Then you're going uphill. But by the time you're downhill, you've already bought something. So if you look everywhere, there's all this like natural stuff that's like half natural, half not natural. You get these plants filtered in with like fake plants and then with like half dead plants. I think it's supposed to give the vibe of like, in every eyeful, there's a bit of greenery because we're kind of in nature. It's natural to be at Chadston, it's natural to spend. I think they want you to think you're outdoors, but you're actually indoors. Yeah. And so if it's raining, you feel comfortable. If it's sunny, they let the sun just rain in, swamp the place with light, and if it's not, then they crank the lighting. There's a lot of kind of long lines of sight, so you always know what's available to you. I used to come here with my dad a bit, and he would take me to my five favorite shops and none of them exist anymore. Toys R Us is no more. And there's something about Chadston where you really could be anywhere in the world. Like this doesn't feel like the surrounding suburbs at all. It doesn't feel like the rest of Melbourne. International globalisation, yeah, at its most anonymous. The ambience that's set up within these walls has more in common with those other places in the other parts of the world. But when everyone leaves here, they kind of go back to their, whether it's affluent suburbs or not affluent suburbs, they're going back to their lives where they're not being taken on this kind of capitalism-themed um, adventure land. And you're talking about manipulation and yet you're here three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, isn't that the best proof? Well, are you hungry? I'm fucking hungry. Chadston's food court is unrecognisable now from what I knew as a 15 year old hanging out here eating fast food before sneaking vodka cruises into the movies. Now it's a place of affluence and aspiration where you can indulge in oysters, caviar and sea urchin if you have the money. But this food also represents the diaspora of the surrounding suburbs. Get this, oh, it's tongue done. Let's get that. Enjoy your wow, meal. Thank wow, you. thank you. Oh. Across Melbourne's southeast, the second most common place of birth for residents is China. In the suburb of Chadston, Chinese is the dominant ethnicity, according to the 2021 census, with 19% of the population having Chinese ancestry. As Melbourne's Asian communities swell and thrive, so too do the food and culture of those groups. And despite some of the price tags, you can see all types of people in this food court. It may be manufactured, polished, but look around and you can get a real taste of life in Melbourne. A lot of seafood. Yeah. They put caviar in everything here. We're gonna have, we're gonna be having a lot of caviar today. You don't want to just stir it through because then you will waste the yolk. So you want to very carefully do a bit of that. Whoa. Then you want to carefully do a bit of this. And that is how you do it. <laughs> this is like a premium food court. Oh, this is premium. This is as premium as it gets. I think how it looks is part of how it tastes because it's like super flashy. And so when you eat like your KFC, it doesn't taste like other KFC. <laughs> and you're kind of in among everyone. It's a very thoughtful place. I think if anything, people turn their noses up in malls and then people who don't even know about the culture of turning your nose up in a mall end up at the mall. They're represented in the kind of foods that are here and 
and they're usually pretty bloody tasty foods. I have no idea how long we've been walking around this perfectly lit, perfectly room temperature fake city, but before we get out of here, Mark's showing me Chadston's $130 million luxury hotel, which opened in 2019. Hi, we're going to Hotel Chadston through um what is only a dozen neo-gothic pillars. It's got a hell of a view, Melbourne's best view. So we're getting an unobstructed view Absolutely. of Melbourne. Not of Melbourne, of the Ooh. eastern suburbs, of the train line. I feel like royalty. Now visitors can not only get the bus direct here from Federation Square in the city, you can stay overnight too. You never have to leave. You can shop and drink and sleep all while looking down on Melbourne's suburbia and the mall itself. The best view of Chadston. That is actually a crazy crazy perspective. Chadston's evolution has been dramatic, but does it still reflect the area and its culture, or has it become the driving force of change the surrounding suburbs and its people now have to keep up with?